fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, dropping some knowledge on y'all. Oxygen exchange. What is it? What do you need to do it? And what the hell is a bubbler? Welcome back to the channel, fishy folks. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about oxygen exchange and what is it. And this is from my series. I read this question on social media and I figured I'd make a video on it. And uh, the question is, do I need a bubbler? What the hell is a bubbler? Do you need an aerator or an airstone? I know, I know. I'm a big meanie and I'm Gen X. I don't really care about your feelings. This is just how it is. It's not a bubbler. It's an airstone. Now, there are cool decorations. Like you remember back in the 70s and 80s, that treasure chest that opened and bubbled? That was kind of cool, but still not a bubbler. First, we have to figure out why they think they need a bubbler. And uh, the reason is they asked the question, my fish is lethargic or it's it doesn't look right or it's pale. And a lot of times one of the first responses besides what are your water parameters is, well, do you have enough oxygen in the water? I, most people can't tell. I'm not even sure if my son who's a chemical engineer can figure that out somehow. But if you could tell, you would see that in 99% of the cases, yes, there's plenty of oxygen in the water. And, and here's, here's how it works. Your fish absorbs oxygen and expels CO2. At some point, there's going to be a discrepancy in how much oxygen to CO2 is in the water. And theoretically, they, they will run out of oxygen or have not enough oxygen to, to survive. But in any body of water, there's gas exchange at the water surface. Any movement creates a, a, a gas exchange, but actually breaking the surface tension is the most efficient. So if you have any kind of filter that breaks the surface tension, you have enough gas exchange. Now, this is especially true or especially important if you have a warm tank or you have a pond outside and it's hot. You, you definitely need this surface tension breakage because warmer water does hold less oxygen. So if you have a pond outside and it's 85 degrees, you're definitely going to want to make sure you have some sort of something breaking the surface tension. Now in a fish tank, usually you don't have a uh, heat that high, but if you are treating for ick and you're raising it to like 86, definitely add an air stone. <clears throat> but if you have a um, sponge filter, a box filter, a hang on back, a canister, an internal filter, anything that, cr that breaks the surface tension is going to make the gas exchange way more efficient than if you didn't. So if you're asked the question, do I need a bubbler? The answer is no. Most people have them because they like how they look. And a lot of fish do like to play in them. Now some fish like bettas aren't going to like the additional flow they, they, they cause, but most fish, all my tetras like it, my plecos go in the lift tube of sponge filters and they like it. I don't know why they like it. Maybe it feels good. Maybe it scratches their belly. Maybe it, you know, simulates something. I don't know. But they like it. So. The answer to the question, do I need a bubbler? More than likely, no. That does it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, share it in all your groups and uh, have a great day. See ya. Hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, I'm gonna be dropping some knowledge on you guys. That's right. Got a whole lot of stuff up here to tell you. Grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage. Healthy, healthy, I don't know. But in any body of water, there's oxygen exchange or, yeah, oxygen exchange, gas exchange. Fuck. But in any bottle of, bo blah, 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 blah. Well, first we have to uh, figure out why people think they need that. So when sometimes, when sometimes, another amount, no, 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 no. So what does a bubbler, <laughs> yeah, uh, the aeration of the water or the surface, breaking the surface tension? No, no, let's just start over. Let's just do it again. 
So what does aeration do? Well, it creates, uh, it breaks the surface. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, Fishy folks. Today we're going to be talking about, um, I don't know what I called it. I should probably start over again. What does...